always, please make sure you take the time to try to solve the question on your own before listening on. We can begin by drawing a picture of this leaping puma. So the question notes that initially the puma leaps off the ground at a 45 degree angle relative to the horizontal, and then it reaches its maximum height of 3.7 meters over here at its final position. So we've labeled delta y as 3.7 meters. Now in order to proceed in solving this question, what we always want to do in a projectile motion question is to break the initial velocity into its x and y components. So we can draw the x component as projecting horizontally to the right, and the y component will be projecting vertically upward. So we'll add some arrowheads to indicate those directions. Now we can see that the y component is opposite to the 45 degree angle, and that means that the y component can be represented as the velocity initial times the sine of 45 degrees. We use sine because this component is opposite from the 45 degree angle. The x component is adjacent to that angle, so we can represent it as the initial velocity times the cosine of 45 degrees. And really, once you have your x and y components filled in, I recommend erasing the resultant initial velocity. We really only want to be dealing with components in projectile motion, force, and other types of questions. So let's take out this initial velocity vector, leaving only behind the components. So once we've done that, we can now turn to a projectile motion table that helps us organize all the information. So here's the table. We have the x and the y components, and then we have the five key pieces of information that are typical of projectile motion questions. We have the initial velocity, the final velocity, acceleration, time, and the displacement. We'll begin with the x direction and fill in as much information as we can. We know from the diagram that the initial velocity in the x direction is represented as vi cosine 45, so we can fill that in. Interestingly, in the x direction in most projectile motion questions, the acceleration is zero. And what that means is that the final velocity will be the same as the initial velocity. If there's no acceleration, in other words, there's no change in velocity, so whatever the initial is must be the final. So we're going to fill in the same thing for the final. The time required to reach the point from the initial position to its final position in the horizontal direction is really unknown, so we can leave it blank or maybe put a question mark there. And the displacement, which would be the length, so to speak, from this point over to this point in the horizontal direction, we do not know that as well, so we'll leave that as a blank. Now on to the y direction. The initial velocity in the y direction was noted as vi sine 45. Now there definitely is acceleration in the y direction. And the reason for that is because of the force of gravity, which is continually pulling down on the puma even as it's flying upward through the air. And because of that downward pull, there's a downward acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That means the final velocity will not be the same as the initial velocity necessarily. In fact, here's the key idea. Once the puma reaches the peak of its height, for that moment, it has no vertical or y velocity. So we know at the final point, right up here, the final velocity in the y direction is zero. Very important point. Again, the time is unknown, and the displacement, which is labeled delta x, but in this case it's really delta y, that is known. That was given as 3.7 meters, so we can fill that into our chart. Now it looks like we have a little bit more information in the y direction, so we're going to focus there and see if we can calculate the time. And to do that, we'll come over here. Here's one of our equations from kinematics, the final velocity equaling the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. We can solve this equation for time by subtracting the initial velocity from both sides of the equation and then dividing both sides by the acceleration a. Once we do that, we can fill in the known values from the y column of our chart. Now the 0 minus vi sine 45 will just become negative vi sine 45 and then the negative in the numerator and the negative in the denominator will cancel. And now that we have an expression for the time, we can plug it into the area where we put the question mark. We can next consider another equation from kinematics, still looking at the y direction. We've changed delta x to delta y just to place emphasis that we are looking at the y direction. So we know the displacement. The delta y was 3.7. We have the initial velocity in terms of vi sine 45. The final velocity was zero. We just came up with an expression for time as well, so we can plug all of that into this equation. 
Now this might look like an intimidating equation, but it's going to be possible to solve this for V initial, which is indeed what we're looking for. Notice that V initial sine 45 plus 0 is still VI sine 45. In other words, we can get rid of that plus 0. And then since we have division by 2, we can multiply both sides of the equation by 2. And then we have division by 9.8, so we can multiply both sides of the equation by 9.8. Now we can multiply these terms here. VI times VI will just become V initial squared. And then if you want, you can use a calculator to multiply sine of 45 times sine of 45, which if you do, you get 1 half. So we still have this times 1 half on the right side. To get rid of that, we can multiply both sides of the equation by 2. A lot of multiplication going on here. And then finally, we can take the square root of both sides. And that changes the right side to V initial. And we finish off here with approximately 12 meters per second, which is indeed the correct answer. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned to additional videos. You're also welcome to send in your own question to the email address listed on your screen.